bitterness is said to be the anvil of the Banshee chain, turning once joyful creatures into rageful apparitions of vengeance. This delineation may go unnoticed to the untrained observer, fleeing for their life while the Red Death hunts them down. But Banshee of this poisoned sort are said to have a more monotone howl, which is the manifestation of the pain they've endured, rather than a collection of that which they've inflicted. A Banshee is more than a simple ghost, for ghosts do not end up as a Banshee by preference of wardrobe or an affinity for chains. Of course, Banshee do have similarities to ghosts. They are the spiritual form of a mortal who has died. They are not bound to the material needs like food or drink, and they seem to exist in perpetuity unless acted upon by an outside force or the dilemma of their passage to the world beyond is solved. Yet there the similarities cease and it is worth considering how the fiends arrived at their current state, whatever unpleasantries lie ahead. The bonds of a banshee are thought to be forged in two primary ways, with the third based more in speculation. The first is by committing heinous acts of bloodshed against innocence, whereby the mortal's own soul is grieved unto enslaving the spirit after death. This is why witches, necromancers, murderers, and so forth have an increased risk of entering the spiritual enslavement of a banshee upon their death. The living may even see evidence of this if their life is given over to works of holistic evil their actions may have already begun to transact upon the immortal realm of the soul, anchoring them beyond the veil of our reality, even as they walk among us. The second means by which a departed mortal might see their spectre bound is by enduring tragedy so painful it poisons their soul. The third manner of becoming a banshee is not as reliably sourced as examples are scarce and accounts second-hand at best. Certain ghosts, unable to move beyond our world, take a liking to tormenting mortals and even scaring them to actual death. In this case, there appears to be a window of transformation open to ghosts who have lost their empathetic connection to mortals. The Banshee Chain is more than a spiritual manifestation or jewelry of spite. It is the forged account of a Banshee's iniquity, a record that bears witness in the natural and supernatural of their vile behavior. Each link speaks with the voice of the victim, calling back condemnation upon the Banshee itself. Thus, the fury of voices unleashed upon living victims is as well a torment to the Banshee who wields it. The understated but still important article of the Banshee appearance is called the Veil of Perdition. This otherwise innocuous looking piece of fabric wraps around most of the face of the Banshee, save for the mouth that houses the howl. This veil is connected in some way to a realm beyond our reality, keeping Banshee physically blind on Terminus while also holding their eyes firmly in view of their future judgment. 